What's going on guys, Flyby Simulations here and welcome to the second episode in my Aircraft Dissected series, wherein we delve into every single switch, knob and display in the flight deck of the Airbus A320 family to give you guys an in-depth understanding of every system present within the aircraft. Now, in the previous episode, we took a look at the left-hand column of the lower overhead panel in the flight deck, and in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the central column. Firstly, I highly encourage you guys to watch the first episode in this series if you haven't seen it yet, as these videos are meant to build upon each other, especially as we move further into the series. Hence, it would be highly advantageous for you guys as viewers to watch them in order. Secondly, I must say that I am not a real-world pilot. I am a 22-year-old business analytics and marketing university student with a keen passion for aviation and aerospace. Now, long-term viewers of the channel might know that I'm not much of a bush pilot or GA aircraft flyer. I love flying large airliners, which usually involves long periods of time where I put the plane on cruise and just kind of sit there. So instead of rotting in front of my monitor for hours on end, I prefer to go out and do things, whether it may be a run, doing my laundry, enjoying a meal outside, but there's always that lingering feeling about how my flight is doing, whether it's all peaceful or if I'm in an uncontrolled nosedive about to kill all of my passengers. Well, with today's sponsor, Asun Remote, you don't have to worry anymore. Asun is a free-to-download application software from macOS, Windows, and Android that allows you to remotely control your PC using your phone phone. As can be seen here, I can monitor my flight, control the cameras, and even move things around as needed without having to be anywhere near my monitor. And this doesn't just work for games. As a content creator, I get great peace of mind when I can monitor the status of my video being rendered on my editing software and having the ability to upload videos to YouTube without physically being at my desk or computer is an absolute godsend. The app does allow keyboard customization as well as mouse support and can also support games up to 144 FPS. So log on to the link in the description section of the video to see all of their expanded payment plans, including a pluggable device that can wake up your PC remotely. Once again, that's Awesome Remote and you can find out more by clicking on the link in the description section of the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the flight deck of the Airbus A320 and specifically to the lower overhead panel. So continuing from this previous episode where we covered this part of the panel, as mentioned before in this video, we will go ahead and cover this column. Okay, so at the very top of the central column, we have the engine and APU fire panel, which, as the name suggests, is responsible for detecting a possible fire within the engines and the APU, or auxiliary power unit, which we will get to later in the video. So let's start with a brief explanation of the fire detection system within the aircraft. Each engine, as well as the APU, has two identical fire detection loops, A and B, that assist the aircraft in determining the presence of a fire. Normally, both loops must detect a fire for any sort of warning to be produced, unless of course the aircraft recognizes that one of the loops is malfunctioning, in which case detection of fire from a single loop would be enough to trigger a warning throughout the flight deck. So now that we have a brief understanding of the fire detection system, let's take a look at some of the buttons and lights on this panel and understand their function. On either side of the panel, we have two identical engine fire switches. In case a fire is detected, the corresponding engine fire switch will illuminate on this panel, accompanied by the master caution light as well as an oral warning within the flight deck. Once any false alarms have been rolled out and consensual agreement has been reached among both pilots that there is indeed a fire, the pilots will flip open the corresponding guard switch and push the red button in. Pushing this button will disconnect the pneumatic bleed valves, the pack valves, the fuel valves, as well as all of the hydraulic valves in that particular engine to be able to mitigate the effects of the fire and isolate that engine from the rest of the aircraft. We'll get to each of the aforementioned systems in a second as we progress through the video. After pressing the red button in, it will protrude outwards to act as a visual indication that the engine is no longer operational and has been proverbially disconnected from the aircraft. That brings us to these two Agent 1 and Agent 2 buttons on either side of the panel. Once the core engine components have been disconnected from the aircraft by pressing the red button in, pilots can then use these two buttons to be able to extinguish the fire. 
In each of the engines, there are two identical electrically charged squibs that hold fire extinguishing agents within them. Pressing these buttons after having isolated the engine from the aircraft first will discharge these agents into the engine to be able to extinguish the fire. Finally, on either side, we also have a little test button that allows pilots to test whether the fire detection alerting system is working as intended. Here's an example of what the button does. Lastly, in the center, we have a similar set of buttons and lights for the APU. We have a test light, an APU fire switch, as well as one squib discharge bottle to extinguish a fire within the APU. Now, for those wondering what an APU is, well, the APU system is on the agenda to cover today as we move further down on this middle column, so stay tuned. Next up, here we have the hydraulic control panel. We'll again delve into some basics about the primary hydraulic system within the aircraft before exploring all the switches and lights on this panel. So, for those of you who don't know, each of the physical, movable surfaces of the aircraft, such as the ailerons, the elevators, and spoilers, are all operated by hydraulic actuation, a process that allows these surfaces to use their surrounding air pressure to respond to the pilot's movement on the side stick. In the Airbus A320, there are three independent hydraulic systems, namely the blue, green, and yellow systems, each of which have separate functions for redundancy and backup. Additionally, the system itself is powered by engine hydraulic pumps and electrical hydraulic pumps within the aircraft, which pressurize the overall hydraulic system and regulate its effects for smooth operation during flight. And as you can immediately see, the blue, green, and yellow hydraulic systems within the aircraft control different movable surfaces and are also connected to the engine and electrical hydraulic pumps to power the entire process. So now that we've taken a look at the overall hydraulic system, let's explore the switches and lights on this panel to understand how they work. Starting from the left here, we have the engine hydraulic pump switch. There are obviously two of these buttons for the pumps in both the engines, of course. As with most other lights in the flight deck, when there is no light illuminated on this switch, it signifies that the system is on and is operating normally. An off light signifies that the engine driven hydraulic pump has been depressurized and has been turned off. Finally, a fault light on this button can indicate any number of different faults, but they usually pertain to the hydraulic reservoirs on each of the blue, green, and yellow systems. These problems can range from the reservoir overheating to the quantity of hydraulic fluid in the reservoir being low due to a lack of air pressure. Essentially, any fault within the hydraulic reservoirs would result in a fault light on this button right here. To the right of this button, we have the RAT manual on switch. So, in the previous episode, we discussed the implications of deploying the RAT, or Ram Air Turbine, to help in the process of providing electrical power to the aircraft during total power loss mid-flight. However, the RAT can also help to pressurize the blue hydraulic system to allow pilots to retain basic control over the aircraft. This red guarded switch therefore allows them to manually deploy the RAT in case auto deployment of the status fails. Coming further right, we have the blue electrical pump switch. Now the eagle eyed among you might have noticed that we also have another electrical pump switch right here. However, unlike the engine pump switches, these two are different from one another, so we'll cover each of them separately. So the blue electrical pump switch, when no light is illuminated, signifies that it is running in the auto configuration, wherein the associated pump operates when AC power is available mid-flight or on the ground with at least one engine running. Recall from the previous episode that AC power stands for alternating current. I did make a mistake saying it was alternate current, so apologies for that. An off light obviously indicates that the pump has been manually or automatically turned off due to a fault. Finally, a dedicated fault light indicates the same set of problems with the hydraulic reservoir as mentioned previously for the engine pumps. While we're on the topic of electrical pumps, let's also go ahead and cover the yellow electrical pump here on the right. So the main difference between the two electrical pumps here is that the blue pump is left on by default, whereas the yellow one is left off by default. So no lights on this button implies that the pump is off. A blue on light here implies that the pump has been manually or automatically started and a fault light obviously implies a fault with the system. Finally, on this panel, we also have the PTU switch, which stands for the power transfer unit. 
So the basic premise behind this system is that, as the name implies, it transfers hydraulic power from one system to the other when required. In the case of the Airbus A320, the pump connects the green and yellow hydraulic systems respectively and its usefulness can especially be noticed when starting the engines before flight. After starting one of the engines, hydraulic power must be transferred to the other engine to be able to start that one up. As a passenger traveling on the aircraft, you might have heard the iconic dog barking sound during pushback and engine start, which sounds like this. <coughs> This sound is the actual PTU system working to transfer hydraulic power between both the subsystems to ensure both engines can be started successfully. So on the button itself, no light obviously implies the system is on and running, an off light implies that it has been turned off manually, and a fault light indicates a problem with the PTU. And that's that for the hydraulic panel within the aircraft. These videos do take a lot of effort and time to put together, so if you guys wish to support me and help me to continue making more of these, then please subscribe to the channel. Also consider joining our free Discord community if you have any questions, and give this video a like to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're seeing. Additionally, and this is in no way necessary, you can also feel free to join our exclusive Patreon page to help support the series financially. Just as an added measure of gratitude for your support, I will also be providing the written text version version of these videos for those of you who want to read the series like a book over on my Patreon page, along with other exclusive benefits, giveaways, and more in the future. Once again, that's completely optional. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so coming further underneath, we have the fuel control panel. So again, just as a basic introduction to the fueling system, for those of you who don't know, fuel in modern airliners is stored in specialized fuel tanks in the wings as well as the central fuselage of the aircraft. In the case of the Airbus A320, there are two wing tanks in either wing, one being the outer tank and this one being the inner wing tank. Along with the four wing tanks, there are also two central tanks in the fuselage for extra fuel to be stored for longer flights. All of these regions of the fueling system are isolated with respect to each other in order to prevent a problem in one of the tanks affecting the other ones. Now typically the wing tanks are fueled first and if more fuel is required for longer flights, only then will the central tanks also be filled up. This is done to assist with the weight and balance characteristics of the aircraft and to also prevent overfilling of the wing tanks which we will get to in just a second. So coming to the panel itself, each of these fuel tanks have dedicated fuel pumps to allow passage of fuel from the tanks to the engines to be used for combustion and thrust. These are the wing fuel pumps on either side, and these two in the center are obviously the central fuel pumps supplying fuel from the central fuel tanks. They all work identically, and so no light on these buttons implies that the system is on and is operating nominally. An off light obviously implies that the switches have been turned off, and a fault light implies that the fuel delivery pressure is less than normal. Now if all the fuel tanks are fueled up in a particular flight, the aircraft will drain the fuel from the central tank first before draining the fuel from the wing tanks. Again, this is simply done to assist with the weight and balance characteristics of the aircraft. Hence, this middle fuel mode select switch is extremely important as it helps to govern the operation of the center tank fuel pumps. When no light is illuminated, that signifies that the system is operating in the auto configuration. What this means is that if there is fuel in the center tank, they will drain first unless the slats in front of the wings are extended, which isn't really important for now. Just know that when running in the auto configuration, the aircraft will automatically use fuel from the central tanks first. When pressed in, the button displays a MAN indication, which implies that the fuel mode is being manually controlled by the pilots using the individual central tank pump switches. Finally, a fault light implies a fault with the particular system, of course. Lastly on this panel, we also have the X-Feed button, which stands for Crossfeed. The basic function of the system is to open up the fuel lines between both wing tanks and essentially unisolate them from one another so fuel can flow freely from one side to the other. Pilots may use this system when there is a fault with one of the wing tanks to allow fuel to drain uniformly from both sides of the aircraft and to be able to utilize all that fuel on board the pilots have available to them. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of the exploration of the central column on the lower overhead panel on the Airbus A320. If you made it this far, congratulations. You now have a sound understanding about every major system on this aircraft and are now aware of the functionality of practically every knob, switch, alarm, and light above the pilots in the flight deck. Now, I must also mention that all of the documentation and websites I used to research for this video are linked down below in the description section of the video, and a written text version of this video can be found exclusively on my Patreon page if you prefer to read that and understand more about this aircraft. That being said, the next video in the series will focus on the right column of the lower overhead panel as well as the entirety of the aft overhead panel, which houses some emergency equipment and switches. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to perform a full stop landing at the like button and the subscribe button and press the bell icon for future notifications from this channel. Also, be sure to fly by the comment section and let me know if there's any questions you'd like me to answer for you. As usual, thanks for watching and thanks for flying by.